So this is my first video looking into the evidence for the warning of Garabandal in the sacred scriptures. One of the most common points of reference for the warning in sacred scripture is the opening of the sixth seal in the book of Revelation uh, on Countdown to the Kingdom on their website, on their chronology, they posit that the warning is depicted in the sixth seal of the book of Revelation. So let's go straight in and read the text of the opening of the, sec the sixth seal in the book of Revelation. It reads as following. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of the heavens fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and their chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and the, from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? That's Revelation 6, 12 to 17. So looking at those verses, we can almost divide the paragraph in two parts. The first part, definitely is explaining some kind of astronomical phenomenon um, maybe a meteor shower maybe something that that we can't put into words at the moment um, the fig trees the figs falling to the ground it sounds to me like some kind of meteor shower or something or something going on in the sky um, the, the scroll the heaven being rolled up like a scroll there's something going on in the sky and a lot of modern accounts of the warning, and especially in more recent seers post Garabandal, have emphasized a solar aspect to the warning that there are going to be phenomena taking place in the heavens. In Conchita's writings, she said that the warning was going to be accompanied by what she saw as the clashing of two stars. But she, she, she was saying in my reading of of, uh, of of what she said was she was saying that the warning seemed to her like that. It didn't seem to me like Conchita actually meant that there was going to be some kind of supernova, some kind of um, awesome solar phenomenon in the night sky. But anyway, other more recent seers have said that the warning will involve this astronomical dimension. So maybe the first part of of the sixth seal is this astronomical side to the warning and then the second part is all about you know kings great men free men everybody basically hiding in little dens hiding in rocks and and saying uh you know we want to flee from the wrath of the lamb we want to hide away ourselves from him who can stand being in his presence and so the idea is that that this with this solar phenomenon, there's this, at the same time, this event that takes place in the hearts of each individual on earth where they want to flee from God's presence because God is all of a sudden immediately before them, looking into their conscience, exposing to them what they've done in this life, illuminating their conscience in such a manner that they're filled with fear, in such a manner that they want to hide themselves from his wrath. So that's that's the idea that we're seeing the warning in these texts. So maybe maybe it is a warning. I mean, this isn't a bad text. It, it does seem to have something like the warning. And, and the advocates of using this text to demonstrate the warning, they will go on to argue that the following section doesn't consist of the second coming. And the following sections in the book of Revelation don't seem to immediately be referring to the final judgment. Because you'd think if this, if these verses are about the final judgment and hiding from our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to judge the living and the dead, that, that should follow straight away next. 
But it doesn't follow. That's not what we hear next in the book of Revelation. The final judgment of the, the good and the bad comes chronologically in the book of Revelation a fair bit later. And so um, advocates um, for the warning say that this passage is about something different. It's about people hiding from the wrath of the Lamb. It's about all people doing it, hiding away, fleeing from this from this immediate presence that's entered their souls. So it looks like the warning. Okay, so are there any problems with this interpretation? I think there are some problems with this interpretation. First of all, first of all, the first problem with this interpretation is that the Asona event in the first part of the of, of the paragraph it involves, as I mentioned, it seems to involve like a meteor shower or something. It seems to involve damage being done on Earth by this solar astronomical phenomenon. Not merely, not merely that the that a solar phenomenon accompanies a warning. Uh, you know, a solar phenomenon that is out there that that is something that just correlates with the warning going on as a kind of super as a kind of astronomical echo that the warning is taking place but rather these verses seem to suggest that then actually the thing that follows all the fear hiding away in the rocks it's a result of the uh, natural astronomical phenomena that are taking place the idea that that the second part is to do with a, a thing in the soul of the believer that may be reading too much into these verses. What seems to be definitely the case is something pretty terrible takes place, maybe involving meteors, maybe involving earthquakes, maybe involving some cataclysm of some kind. And people are so frightened of what's going on that they hide and they see these natural disasters as acts of God. And so they, as it were, hide themselves from God's anger. Now that seems to me the obvious reading of this paragraph. The warning reading seems to be adding more than is necessary. Okay, let's add a little bit more now, contra to this understanding of, of the sick field seal being the warning. Um, my other problem with people in Countdown to the Kingdom saying that the sick seal is a warning is that Basically, when you look at the seals that precede the sixth seal and what goes on in those seals, uh, in the lifting of those seals, it's pretty terrible. It's pretty terrible. In the seals that precede the sixth seal, we've got famine, we've got pestilence, we've got martyrdom, we've got persecution of the church, so much so that at least well, well over a quarter of the earth will have been killed as a result of the events in the lifting of the seals. And the earth will be in such disarray at the time of the warning. It actually seems to me that the nature of the warning, the very word, is about um, giving you a warning, making it so that you are prepared, making it so that you turn back to God prior to a chastisement. But these seals before the warning, the lifting of these seals seems to me an awful lot like a huge chastisement. So much so that that actually it seems to me more like the lifting of these seals represents more likely the chastisement that's going to come. I know later on in the book of Revelation, you've got the trumpets and you've got the bowls being poured out and all of them bring even worse chastisements. So I think people on the countdown to the kingdom say, well, because the other chastisements are so much more awful, this this one here needs to be seen as a kind of less, lesser chastisement. But look, if possibly up to a third of the world has been killed, has died as a result of, of the lifting of these seals, it seems to me like, like at Garabandal, there was no sense that the warning was going to come after a third of the world had been killed. Sure, I, I think one of the children, I think it was Mary Lowley, said that, that communism will have returned and that things will be pretty bad. But 
ultimately the chronology of Garabandal was warning, miracle, conditional chastisement. Warning, miracle, conditional chastisement. Countdown to the kingdom's interpretation of Book of Revelation sounds like chastisement, 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 warning, chastisement, chastisement, chastisement. Because that's how the Book of Revelation reads, um, if, if, they, if you take it in this fashion. And this actually highlights another problem with actually using the book of Revelation in, in this way. And that is the fact that the book of Revelation doesn't follow a strict chronology. And that's because this section here about the lifting of the six seals and seven seals, it actually comes before the depiction of the incarnation uh, and the assumption of Our Lady in the book of Revelation. That comes way later in the book of Revelation. And then Further on, you have depictions of of the final judgment, and then the new the new Jerusalem, um, and you've got the and then thrown in that you've got the war with Michael the archangel and the devil. Um, so the book of Revelation doesn't actually move in a straightforward chronological order. A lot of biblical commentators say that the book of Revelation is more like a spiral in in its uh, chronology it over it goes over the same events and then goes back to the beginning and goes over the same events and so maybe in poetic language the seven seals and then the then the trumpets and the bowls maybe they're the same kind of events uh, and it's just going over them again and again to be honest we don't really know um what the book of revelation events are going to correspond uh, with but is it the warning i think if the warning is present in the book of revelation i would actually put it in a really different place i would put the warning as the letters of the spirit to the churches at the very beginning of the book of revelation because i think if there's going to be a warning and i hope there is going to be a warning it's going to be before a, f a quarter of the world has died from pestilence and there's been global war and massive persecution of the church. All that sounds to me like chastisement, conditional chastisement. If the warning is present in the book of Revelation, I think it's symbolized by the letters that St. John has dictated to him by our Lord Jesus Christ. I think those um, letters represent in a way the warning to those churches it's it's almost like an examination of the lives of and the behavior of those churches where they're doing well where they're doing badly calling them to repent calling to return to their first fervor lest they be uh, cut off so to me that if there's anything to the warning in the book of revelation those letters to the churches seem to symbolize a kind of warning prior to the occurrence of all of the chastisements. I know this is much more symbolic because the letters were letters. They weren't, um, they weren't an immediate illumination of conscience of all of the people in those churches scattered around the Near East. But I think if, if anything's a warning in the book of Revelation, it is the actual warning that our Lord is giving to the churches. And let's not forget, none of those churches ultimately heeded to our Lord's message because now all of those areas have been overrun with another religion, a false religion of Islam. So the people didn't respond ultimately and for the long term to our Lord's warning to them and chastisement fell upon them. So that's my interpretation, my response to the warning as the sixth seal in the book of Revelation. Um, the book of Revelation's uh, first five seals come across to me more like the events that, that what the chastisement Our Lady mentions at Akita than it does some kind of minor tribulation prior to the warning. It looks to me way too much like the chastisement to, to, to come before the warning. The warning has to come before the chastisement. And that's why, like Father Luis Saavedra and many of the Garabandel scholars are not into the countdown to the kingdom movement. And they seem to be of the opinion that the warning is imminent and that we're not going to have to wait for a mass famine, global war, 
quarter of the world to die from pestilence. They think the warning is ripe right now, that socioeconomically things are bad enough. In a certain sense, communism has returned in, in some character to the world. And so we are ripe for the warning right now. I think I would kind of be of that view too. Uh, we are ripe for the warning right now. We don't need a quarter of the world to die first. And that's probably good news for us because I know we'd all much rather a warning prior to uh, a quarter of the world being killed by pestilence. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.